2NURFM, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. And it's uh, a virus that pretty much most of us hadn't heard of till the last couple of months. We're talking about the Zika virus and Dr Beverly Patterson, HMRI postdoctoral fellow at the School of Medicine and Public Health, has slipped into the studio this morning to tell us just a little bit more about the Zika virus. Good morning. Good morning, Todd. Lovely to have you. And you've been cycling around New Zealand. I have. Beautiful. Uh, we, we made sure we had a nice, comfortable seat for you this morning. So <laughs> <laughs> hopefully it's, it's taken care of that. The Zika virus, would I be right in saying that most of us had not heard of it until the last couple of months. In a nutshell, what is the Zika virus? Sure. Look, even scientists, and I'm an epidemiologist, we hadn't heard about Zika. It was a fairly non-disease. It wasn't a disease that made you very sick. Um, There had been outbreaks in French Polynesia. And then there was an enormous outbreak in Brazil. And following that outbreak, they noticed that there were quite a few cases of microcephaly. And this is where babies are born with particularly small heads and they have um, neurological problems. And this is when um, Zika was first um, signalled as, as a disease that, that was an issue. And so the, the World Health Organization has declared um, it a, a a disease that's a public health emergency of international concern. And it's because we believe that it is linked to these cases of microcephaly or the small heads and something else called Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is where um, you, you get a, a type of paralysis and that's in adults. Now, America had a, a few cases and that's when the alarm bell started to ring, North America. What about Australia? Where do we sit in the grand scheme of things? Because most people are just saying, I don't don't know. Firstly, they're worried about Australia. Then we'll get on to touring and travelling. So what about Australia? Well, Australia's had more than 20 cases of Zika. But for Zika to be transmitted, you have to have a particular type of mosquito. Now, we do have that mosquito in north and um, central Queensland. Um, But at the moment, we don't have any cases where there's been local transmission. So it's been where people have visited places with Zika and they've come back to Australia and then the symptoms have been identified as Zika virus. So in North Queensland, they're taking a a really close look at any cases because what you don't want to have is someone who's got Zika and then gets bitten by the right sort of mosquito and then the mosquito can transmit it to someone else. So down here in Newcastle, we don't have that sort of mosquito. And here at the university, uh, you know, there are lots of mosquitoes. Oh, really? We all know. (laughs) Um, but it, it's not it's not an issue here. It's yeah. only an issue if you travel to a place that has um, a Zika outbreak. Well, that's great news because most people are saying, look, we know we've got a million mozzies and depending on where you go around Newcastle and the Hunter. So uh, South America, w- what do we need to look out for? And we were talking off the air and who should and shouldn't go to South America or what should the things that you should take into consideration if you decide to go? Who should and shouldn't? Well, unfortunately, it's not just South America. It's also in some parts of the Pacific, um, places like Tonga, Samoa, Fiji's just had a case, uh, New Caledonia's also had a case. Um, you just need to really think carefully about going to places. Now, in somewhere like uh, Fiji, they haven't had very many cases. You wouldn't say there's an outbreak. Um, So the chances of getting bitten by a mosquito are pretty low. But if you went to somewhere like Brazil where there's a big outbreak, if you're a man uh, and you have a pregnant partner, when you come back, the Australian government advice is that you need to wear a condom for the entire pregnancy. If you come back and it looks like you uh, you have a confirmed case of Zika and your partner isn't pregnant, then you need to wear a condom for at least three months because it can remain in a man's semen. Um, Basically, if you're, if you're a woman, if you were pregnant at this stage, definitely uh, don't make the trip. Well, the advice is to consider it really carefully. You might want to talk to your GP. Uh, if it was my friend, my advice would be don't go uh, because the, the risk of it happening is pretty low, but the consequences are enormous. And it doesn't seem to matter what time through your pregnancy, you know, you go to a place, the outcomes can be severe from, from these babies with small heads, other neurological problems or um, stillborn babies, all sorts of things.
It's interesting, isn't it, when you've had a, a long-haul flight and you get into Sydney and all you want to do is get off the plane and then they say, look, please remain in your seat. We're going to come through and spray. And everyone grumbles and, you know, because that happened on a recent flight for me. Oh, I didn't know they did that They anymore. still do it. I didn't realise they did it either. They came through and they sprayed. I'm never going to whinge again. Uh, Beverly, thank you very much for giving us the lowdown on the Zika virus. Obviously, for us closer to home, it's uh, we're more relaxed about it. It makes us feel a little bit better knowing that Australia is A-OK, but some great information on travelling. No worries. Thank you, Todd. Thank you for your time. That is Dr Beverly Patterson. HMRI Postdoctoral Fellow, School of Medicine and Public Health, talking about the Zika virus.